Hey guys, in this video we're going to be looking at reproduction in humans and the menstrual cycle. All the different hormones that you need to know, how they interact with each other and what all the different parts do. In human reproduction you've got two different organisms. You've got the female, human female organism and you've got the male organism. Right, now I need to label these parts. So here you've got the ovary. This is the oviduct. The oviduct is where the egg gets fertilized. This is the uterus. The uterus has a uterine lining. You can also call it a uterus lining. You've got the cervix, which is the mouth of the uterus, and then you've got the vagina. In the male part, you've got the bladder, you've got the prostate, you've got the testes, you've got the penis. This is the urethra, and this one over here, uh, the one leading to the bladder is the ureter. This is the vas deferens. The vas deferens is also known as the sperm duct. This is the menstrual cycle in women. It lasts an average of 28 days, but in reality it could be as much as six weeks or as little as two weeks. Um, you'll notice that halfway through the cycle is a little event called ovulation. Now, ovulation is there, and it is the point where the egg is released into the oviduct, and the egg then travels from the oviduct for a couple of days, and... The most fertile periods for a woman are just after ovulation to two or three days after ovulation. And then obviously premenstruation happens and menstruation begins again on day one. So from days one to five, you've got the actual menstruation happening where the uterine lining is shedding. From days six up to days 14, you've got the uterine lining preparing for implantation or possible implantation. And this is also where follicle stimulating hormone is getting the egg ready and then you've got ovulation and then luteinizing hormone kicks in after ovulation. Now what you need to know about the menstrual cycle as a um, as a double student so somebody who's not doing triples is literally just the cycles what happens on each day so day one to five you've got menstruation after that you've got the egg ripening 14, you've got ovulation, you've got the fertile period, and then you've got back to menstruation. The sex cells, so the sperm and the egg, or the ovum, have particular adaptations to, to fulfill their function. So the function of the sperm is to fertilize the egg. To do this, the sperm has enzymes at the front of it. This is the acrosome to dissolve away the cell layer surrounding the ovum. So this layer over here, the cell layer surrounding the ovum and get itself into the egg so the nuclei can fuse. There's a nucleus over here. In the neck area of the sperm here, there are many mitochondria. This is to create energy for swimming. So it's got a tail over here, which is basically a protein flagella, which helps the sperm swim towards the egg. The egg itself has a very large cytoplasm, which acts as a food store. So as it's released from the ovary, it has to survive for three to four days if it's going to be fertilized. So it needs a very large cytoplasm to provide energy and things for it. It's surrounded in a, a couple of layers of cells. And it's also able to survive on its own for a few days, obviously. Once the sperm swims up to the egg and has burrowed its way through, the two nuclei will come together and they'll fuse. 
So the nuclei will fuse into one nucleus, single nucleus, that's called fertilization. The nuclei fuse. And then division will start. So cell division over here is called mitosis because it's literally cell division of diploid cells and it'll go from two cells to four cells to eight cells and onwards. Now as the cells develop, the organism will get larger and larger. So you'll have two cells, then you'll have four cells, then you'll have eight cells. An eight cell embryo has a lot of stem cells. So if you, if this is an embryo that is being grown to be harvested for its stem cells, it would be grown to the eight cell stage. Then you get a stage called a blastocyst when it's large enough. And then over here, you've got an embryo. Now an embryo, this one's a zygote, when it's just fertilized, an embryo starts to look like a little tiny human. So it then starts to get bigger and bigger. As it's past a couple of weeks, when it is larger, it gets called a fetus. And it gets called a fetus until birth. After birth, it then gets called a, you guessed it, it's a baby. Now, fertilization development actually happens here in the oviduct. So this bit over here is the ovary. This is the oviduct. And the sperm will f fertilize the egg. In the oviduct. It will then divide. So the two nuclei will come together, become one nucleus. It'll divide, two cell division. It'll divide again, four cells, eight cells, right? And then right over here, so there's a zygote at this stage. Right over here, it'll become an embryo. So at this stage, a couple of cells, the blastocyst stage, it's already implanted. into the uterus or the uterine lining. Right, so your cell starts off the ovary, it bursts out of the ovary, it gets fertilized in the oviduct by the sperm. The sperm enters the ovum and fertilizes the um, ovum. The two nuclei come together, become a zygote, this point here where they fuse. is called fertilization, two cells, four cells, eight cells. Coming down into the uterus, you've got more multiples of cells, becomes a blastocyst, implants itself into the uterine lining, and then the embryo grows inside of its amniotic sac to complete development, where it is called a fetus just before birth. After birth, it then gets called a baby. So it's not a baby until it is born. Before it is born, it is a fetus. Human pregnancy generally goes on for nine months or 40 weeks. The beginning, you've got small amounts of cells. Towards the end, the fetus turns itself so it has head down because that's the biggest part of the fetus and that's the easiest to come out first. So it's got head down, it's got a placenta. This is the mother's spinal cord or a spinal vertebrae. You've got the fetus inside the uterus, the umbilical cord over here. You've got the amniotic sac surrounding the fetus. Inside the amniotic sac, this blue substance over here is your amniotic fluid. The amniotic fluid is basically there for protection of the fetus. 
it's a liquid the fetus floats in when the fetus is quite small when from between zygote and embryo stage if anything happened to it it'd be floating in this bubble of water so the water would mean that it would be protected as an example if i put a raw egg into a glass jar and shook the glass jar i'd end up cracking the egg and breaking the egg so that all the insides of the egg would leak into the jar if I took the same egg in the same jar and filled the jar with water and then tried to shake it, you'd notice that the egg would not crack because I, I couldn't get enough force to be able to crack that egg in the jar because the water was buffering the movement. And that's what happens inside of the uterus. The amniotic fluid protects the fetus. So after nine months or 40 weeks, the the fetus will be born, it will move down the, from the uterus down into the vagina, which is this area over here, this canal, and out into the world where it would then be called a baby. In order for birth to happen, the uterus is a large muscle, so it would need to contract to squeeze the fetus out through the vagina. The interaction of follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone in the menstrual cycle is really important. So generally in the menstrual cycle, for the first five days, you've got a peak in follicle stimulating hormone. That's because as menstruation is happening, the current uterine lining is being sh um, shed and follicle stimulating hormone is starting to stimulate the follicle to be able to create the next egg, right? So follicle stimulating hormone peaks over there. And as it comes round, just over here, there's another little peak of follicle stimulating hormone. This is also a large peak in this area of luteinizing hormone. Now luteinizing hormone starts off the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum, the corpus luteum starts to grow after ovulation, and then it also starts to break down. So luteinizing hormone peaks over there, corpus luteum starts to grow, and then corpus luteum starts to break down. Now the corpus luteum is responsible for the peak in progesterone. So the peak in progesterone goes on from about day 18-ish all the way to kind of day 25, 26. Right? And that is because progesterone maintains the uterine lining. Now, if over here, between day 14 and day 18, the most fertile times, if a pregnancy occurs, progesterone so if the egg gets fertilized by the sperm, if pregnancy occurs, progesterone remains constant. nine months for the whole growth of the fetus because progesterone's function is to maintain the uterine lining. The uterine lining is maintained, the embryo can embed in it and grow inside of the uterine lining. If pregnancy does not occur and implantation hasn't happened in that fertile period, then the uterine lining breaks down and the menstrual cycle happens again. Now you do have a third hormone a fourth hormone that we've not talked about. So you've got progesterone, you've got FSH, and you've got LH. The other hormone is estrogen. Now, estrogen peaks round about day 7 to day 14. This is where estrogen peaks. All right, the reason estrogen peaks is estrogen also stimulates the release of the egg. Right? 
And estrogen is also responsible for secondary sexual characteristics. So, in a way, estrogen is doing things like preparing breasts for menstruation and, and, and other kinds of things in the background. So, you've got follicle-stimulating hormone. There's a little peak of follicle-stimulating hormone because follicle-stimulating hormone stimulates follicle to ripen egg. Now the egg needs to be ripe for day 14 when luteinizing hormone peaks and causes ovulation. So luteinizing hormone causes ovulation. Right, once ovulation is caused, the corpus luteum grows. Corpus luteum then breaks down while the corpus luteum is growing and breaking down. It causes a rise in progesterone. Progesterone then maintains the uterine lining. If pregnancy happens, progesterone remains constant for nine months. If pregnancy does not happen, menstruation. Starts. And then the cycle continues. Now you do need to be able to say what happens when. So you need to be able to say that the follicle stimulating hormone stimulates the follicle to ripen the egg before ovulation. That all happens before ovulation. Right, and then follicle stimulating hormone just kind of con decreases after then almost does nothing between day 14 and day 28. Then estrogen peaks stimulates the egg release on day 14. Day 14, there's a little peak of FSH and LH. The large, the large peak of LH causes ovulation on that day, corpus luteum, corpus luteum breaks down, peak in progesterone, etc., etc. So you need to be able to go around the cycle naming the days to talk about the interaction of follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. The most likely questions on this is what does each stand for and what does each do? Or a six mark biggie talking about the interaction of the different hormones during the menstrual cycle. Ouch. Mm, I'll be too